Hello there. Hello and welcome to Player 2 Props. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber hilt from the Disney Plus series. From 3D printing to painting and weathering, I'm going to show you the whole process I went through to make this potentially as screen accurate as possible. I put in a lot of research. I looked at a lot of still images of, from the show to try to make this as much of a replica as I possibly could from just images, mainly for my own satisfaction. But without further ado, this saga begins a long time ago at a computer not so far away. Star Wars wipe! I modeled the lightsaber in Fusion 360. Like I said, I used many reference images to try to make it as accurate to the show as possible. There's a hole running through it for a threaded rod to give it heft and durability. All the parts were exported and sent to my resin 3D printer. I'm sure you could print them on an FDM 3D printer, but I didn't model them with that in mind, so you'll want to make sure your support settings are just right if you want to try it. But I'm sure it's possible, you'll just need more cleanup work. Alright, now I have all the parts printed. They're all washed and cured so they're okay to handle. Ah, oh, and they come out so nice. Resin 3D printing is remarkable like that. Parts come out needing very little cleanup work. However, there needs to be a little bit of cleanup work because I added some holes to the models to relieve suction forces while printing and I need to fill those in now. And I'm also going to lightly sand all the pieces so that they're as buttery smooth as possible before adding any paint. So, without further ado, I present every prop maker's favorite part of the process, sanding. Okay, you're gonna wanna get this work surface covered cause we're getting our hands dirty with some Bondo. Bondo glazing and spot putty is a great substance, but you'll want to wear some gloves and a respirator while using it. You just take a little bit of Bondo, you rub it into your parts, fill in any little imperfections like these little holes that Emmett left in the model. And you're gonna wanna smooth it out with your finger or a tool as much as you can before it dries. These parts don't have any major imperfections that would require more Bondo along the entire surface. Just these little holes that we left in the model on purpose. We gotta fill all those in. When the Bondo is dry, it should look like this. We want it to be pretty smooth and we want all those holes to be completely filled in. Now I'm grabbing a mirror with sandpaper taped to it. Glass mirrors are very flat, so sanding the parts over this will ensure nice, flat, flush mating surfaces between parts. If you don't have a spare mirror just lying around like I do, you could just sand along your tabletop. As long as it's relatively flat, it should be fine. I went from 220 to 120 grit here because I wasn't getting through the part fast enough for my liking. You'll just want to sand every single piece until the Bondo is nice and flush. It's very important that all the surfaces between parts are nice and flat and smooth. Otherwise, you might get weird extra thick gaps between pieces and the whole thing is supposed to look nice and tight. Here's what the pieces look like when they're done. The Bondo has filled in the gaps and the surface is flush. With the flat part sanded, now we have to go around the edges. So with that, I take some 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just rubbing away until the part feels pretty smooth. I just want any subtle imperfections to be completely worn away and also for the Bondo to be completely flush. And of course, make sure you get every single piece. The smoother you get everything now will determine how effective the following steps will be and ultimately the quality of your final finish. So sand thoroughly. And 
And don't forget the smallest pieces, they need love too. Make sure you clean up any extra support material or anything like that. We need everything as smooth as it can be. Alright, after not an insignificant amount of elbow grease, these parts are all sanded. They're as smooth as I need them to be for the next step, which is priming. Primer is important because it lays down a good foundation for the rest of the paint to go on, to adhere to. It really helps paint stick. I will be using this white primer. You could use any color primer, but because my parts are gray, I want to use white, so there's a contrast. If I need to sand it, I can tell like if the parts are poking through the primer at all, and the contrast will help me see where I'm putting the primer on. It's that easy, so let's get priming. Time to prime. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. It's time to prime. This part's self-explanatory. Just apply a few light coats of primer to all the pieces. Okay, so I think you saw there that I ended up using Old Reliable Filler Primer. There were some deeper imperfections that this primer could not fill in. I'm sorry for doubting you. Shh, it's okay. He means nothing to me. It'll still be nice to have the white and the gray in layers for the next step, which if you've seen my Pokeball video, you know what that is. Well, if you don't know, it's time for wet sanding. I take 400 grit sandpaper and a little bit of soapy water. We dump the part, the sandpaper, we rub it all over. It's, it's, it's sanding, but wet. Once again, make sure you get every surface. We want this extra nice and smooth because this has to look like quality space metal. Then you literally rinse and repeat for every other piece. And I wasn't kidding about my Pokeball video. If for some reason you really like sanding, that video is like 70% sanding. So give it a watch. So with everything wet sanded, we can move on to our base coat of paint. For that, I'm going to be using this glossy black. Two of the pieces are going to stay glossy black, but the other ones will be getting a special treatment that I learned about thanks to a YouTuber named Pete Rondeau. I will leave a link to his video in the description. But in his video, he tests many chrome finishes. Chrome is a notoriously hard or cost prohibitive finish to achieve in prop making. Uh, you either need like special processes or like really expensive paints. But one of the methods in this video stood out because it was cheap and easy to apply, but the results were brilliant. And that method is using this. This is a nail powder that you would use to get a chrome finish, a metallic finish on fingernails. Like who would have thought, I guess. It's like a super fine glitter. In Pete's video, he applies it the way you're meant to apply it, which is over a gel nail polish. But I found that if you buff the powder into a semi-tacky glossy paint before it's fully dried, it will become a uniform chrome finish with a brilliant shine. I did a test and look at this. It looks like metal. Like to me, like here, like I know it's plastic, but I mean, look at the shine. And you might be wondering why didn't I try graphite powder? Lots of people use that for, for chrome, for especially for Mandalorian armor. Well, I did on this side and it's shiny, but it's a lot darker. I tried it over a white gloss and it came out a bit brighter, but it was still a little darker than I wanted. Finish is nice and uniform, but I found it's a little more Fragile. I think it, it takes fingerprints a bit better. Whereas this, like, I can't mess this up. I think it just really binds into the paint once it's cured and it becomes as strong as the paint itself. And another great thing that it has 
over graphite powder is that it comes in multiple colors. This is like a coppery color and a gold. These came in the same pack with a bunch of other colors that this one did, the silver. So this part needed to be copper for the lightsaber. And I mean, you can't get that with graphite. Graphite comes out silver or like a dark steel every time. If you wanted to, you could do like a blue chrome. That's, that's the magic of this stuff. Uh, I haven't tried any like colorful colors, but I mean, limitless possibilities really. So thanks Pete for the discovery. Remember his video is linked in the description and I'm gonna show you how I applied this now. So the process is fairly simple, but it is time sensitive. First, you want to paint the parts with the glossy black spray paint. You can go one at a time, or if you work quickly enough, you can spray multiple. Remember, you have to apply the powder before the paint dries. The paint should be dry enough that it doesn't smear, but it should still take a fingerprint. You also want to make sure you get an even, glossy finish. Any rough patches in your paint job will prevent you from getting the uniform sheen that we are after. Next, apply the powder. I'm using this little makeup brush that came with my package. You won't need all that much to cover all the pieces, but you also don't want to be stingy. The powder glides on very easily if you use enough of it, but if the brush starts to stick at any point, you likely need more powder. Continue working the powder into the entire piece. Remember, the paint isn't fully dry, so be careful not to touch the paint anywhere that will show. As you work, there will be plenty of loose powder on the surface. I found it is not worth trying to work it all in. You'll have an easier time getting new powder than trying to spread out every last particle. Speaking of loose powder, once the entire piece is covered, grab a cotton ball or better yet, a microfiber towel and clean off the excess. Don't forget to take a moment to admire your work. I mean, look at that shine. The copper powder gets applied exactly the same way. And it gives similarly dazzling results. Now for the gold. This one might be my favorite. So all the parts are nice and shiny and metallic. They look like real metal, but now what? Well. In the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, these black parts are very weathered. There's a lot of paint chipped off on the edges, so I'll be doing some dry brushing. For this next step, I used a silver acrylic paint and a silver paint marker. For those new to dry brushing, you take some silver paint and you wipe off almost all of it onto a paper towel and then you just hit the raised edges of your part, leaving just the smallest amount of the silver paint behind. This will make it look like the edges have been worn away, exposing the raw metal underneath. In addition, I used the paint marker to simulate more aggressive paint chipping. I carefully dabbed along the edges so it would look like paint had flaked away here. This part is all about the artist's touch. If you don't know what effect you're aiming for, you should take a look at images of real chipped paint for reference. In the end, what I thought would be a standard dry brushing session turned into quite the task. I carefully drew tons of paint chipping by hand to supplement the dry brushing. But I'm in love with the results, so it was worth it. So what's next? Well, I need to put the whole thing together so that I can hit it with this 2K clear coat. This is a special clear coat that shouldn't dull the surface too much. 
and creates an extra hard, extra glossy uh, finish. You could go with a regular clear coat. You could also just not clear coat it. This stuff seems pretty durable, but it will probably take a ding here or a scratch there. So if you want to protect it very nicely, I recommend something like this. This stuff has a hardener in it. It's a little bit expensive. It's like $25 a can or something. So it's a bit more than your average clear coat. And it can only be used for 48 hours after you activate it. But it's what they use on cars. So it should be good enough for a lightsaber. So I'm going to assemble the whole thing before I paint it. This way I can spray the entire lightsaber in one go and not have to worry about the pieces not fitting together. Take your super glue of choice. I use the gel super glue and glue the little greeblies where they belong. The little gear goes in the bottom and the little button gets recessed in the top hole. The pommel and the emitter both accept a 5 16 nylon lock nut. I used JB Weld here because it sticks well to metal and it is very strong. But I'm sure super glue would also work. Make sure the nut is fully seated in its hole and wipe off any excess glue. Then we do the same for the emitter. It's very important that you wipe off all the excess here because a part needs to fit in this hole. Now we take a 5 16 threaded rod and cut it to 25.6 centimeters. Good thing I've been practicing my karate. Ayah! Ah, yes. So easy. Now it's time to put it all together. Thread the rod into the pommel. Make sure it binds into the nut well. Use pliers if you have to, just don't go so far that you go all the way through the nut. Then the rest of the pieces just slide into place, and the registration keys in the connections should keep them lined up properly. Finally, the emitter gets screwed on top to tighten up our lightsaber sandwich. If you wanted to skip all this, you could, but you'd have to glue the parts together and you couldn't ever take them apart. Then you would have to do some masking in the following steps. I'm sliding the activation box in here, but it will require glue to stay in place. But look at that, it's finally a full lightsaber. And now it's time for some clear coat. As per the instructions, shake for two minutes, then you put the stopper into the bottom, you press until it clicks, and pump it to make sure all the hardener gets out, and then you shake it again for another two minutes. While spraying this stuff, make sure you are wearing a respirator, gloves are recommended, and proper ventilation is a must. This stuff is nasty, so be safe. In the end, I applied three coats with 10 to 15 minutes between each coat. Then I let the whole thing cure overnight. Alright, so it's all sealed and the finish is protected. This 2K clear coat is really nice. Uh, it seems very durable. It's very glossy. One thing of note, the finish went from a pretty universal sheen to being a little more sparkly. It has a, some more pinpoints of, of glittery sparkliness in it. Definitely run your own tests if that's something you want to avoid, but for me, it looks fine. You could also go without sealing it. I don't know exactly how durable it would be, but on a shelf, on a display shelf, it would probably be fine. But I knew I was gonna be hanging it on my belt, so I wanted maximum protection. Either way, it's sealed and we're almost done. So in the show, the emitter is a matte gray color with shiny worn edges. So I'm gonna airbrush the whole emitter gray and you might be wondering, why did I go through the trouble of paint 
painting the whole thing nice, shiny, and chrome if I was just going to paint over it. While I could have just dry brushed silver onto the emitter like I did with these parts, I wanted to try actually buffing through the top layer of paint to reveal the chrome underneath, you know, different, different method, make it like a treat. So I'm gonna fire up the old airbrush. You could just paint it by hand if you don't have an airbrush, but I do, so let's get painting. I use this Vallejo German Gray. You thin it a little bit, put it in the airbrush, and spray it on. And if you're impatient, use a hairdryer to dry it. I sealed it with a little bit of matte varnish. Then, with a high grit sandpaper, I went at the edges. You're only looking to go through the gray that you just put down. You don't want to go too deep and get rid of the chrome. Then, to really nail the look, I dry brushed a little bit with the silver paint and the silver paint marker. With both techniques combined, you get a really nice finish. Alright, the emitter is screen accurate. But how are we going to make sure our lightsaber is always at our side, hanging from our trusty Jedi utility belt? Well, that's where this comes in. It's a cover tech button I got from the custom saber shop. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's aluminum. It has a screw or thread on the back. That goes into this hole right here that's already in the model. I'm going to drill into this hole and tap it with a 832 tap, then screw it in. Then we'll be able to have our lightsaber ready at our side for any chance encounters with a certain tall Darth and handsome. All right, let's do it. Okay, we're drilling, so we need a drill. Also, a number 29 drill bit. Just line it up with the hole and drill away. Now we take the 832 tap, and we tap the hole. Now we take our cover tech button, you could use any kind, just make sure it has a flat back, and you might have to adjust the hole depending on which one you get. Cover tech button installed. All right, one more thing to do. We're gonna do one more pass of weathering on this thing. It's a little too clean. We're gonna get acrylic paint. I'm gonna use black and brown, wet it down real good, and just like wash over the entire thing, get it into all the nooks and crannies, all the crevices, all the places that dirt would collect over years and years of, you know, being on distant worlds. Then, Wipe off all the excess as if you were in a cave, you know, polishing up your lightsaber. And we'll call this one done. All right, I got my paper towels, water, acrylic paints. Let's get dirty. I mean, let's get the lightsaber dirty. This is the nerve wracking part because it's like, put all this work into the paint job and then you just kind of cover it up in mud. I decided to take off the emitter here because it wasn't clear coated the same way and I wanted to weather it separately. I simply replaced it with an extra nut. Make sure you get the wash deep down into the crevices, but don't let it dry too long before you take it off all the high points. Here you can see, the wash really only stays in the deeper recessed areas. Boom, and we got a lightsaber. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber. It's all weathered and worn, and it looks like it's straight out of the deserts of Tatooine. You could always do a little bit of more weathering on it. You could add some fuller's earth to really make it 
you know, look like it's been through a sandstorm or two, you could uh, completely modify all the files and make it fit electronics and, and, a, and a blade if you want to do that. It's not designed for that, but you do whatever you want. I'm going to leave the files, a uh, link to them in the description. Feel free to use those to make your own lightsaber. If you liked this video, please leave it a like. It helps and leave a comment. Let me know if you do anything, if you make this, if you just like the video, if you didn't like the video. If you want to tell me that you uh, changed some of the process, you found a better way of doing things, all I want to hear all of it. So leave a comment. And if you want more videos like this, I've got a few more cooking. Uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to go age very rapidly over the next nine years. <laughs> okay.